What is going on guys? It is Trifecta J and welcome to episode 4 of my NBA 2K My Gym on the PS4 with the Atlanta Hawks. And this is game 37. Right now we're 19 and 17 and we're taking on the San Antonio Spurs. As this is sort of a homecoming, just or it's a a reunion of sorts for Mike Budenholzer and Greg Popovich. Budenholzer was a longtime assistant under Popovich and now he's the coach of the Hawks. And this game is taking place in Phillips Arena. Like I said, we are 19 and 17. Sort of a slow start from I expected us to be a little bit above 500, more than two wins at this point. Because this is definitely a playoff team and we're about ready to tip off here. This is pretty much the same core of San Antonio Spurs players. So now Jeff Teague has the ball, bringing it up, going with a crossover, hits the crossover one more time, trying to just get the play set up, throwing in the post to Millsap, Millsap in the post, and he just goes with a little left-handed hook and puts that up and in. Tony Parker with the ball, swinging it to Ginobili. Lou Williams blocks that shot, and he's on the fast break, and he dunks that in. A great shot right there from Lou Williams. Sort of... I think in this game he actually did start just to have a little more speed on the perimeter to help with Manu Ginobili as that's selling the Corver. He's not a great defender. So Al Horford passing it up to Jeff Teague on the fast break. Teague has the ball. He kicks it to Millsap who's trailing and he lays that up and in. As the Hawks are off to a really nice start, it's 10-2. As in this game, this is a, a big game for us to win as this is a playoff team in the West as Jeff Teague hits the pull up three. As we're shooting 63% on the day and the Spurs still have not made a field goal. So Gordon Hayward with the ball. He shoots the three and gets that one to go. As it's already 16-2. to two. This game's already getting out of hand and it's not even through the first quarter. Jeff T corner three and he gets that to go. 19-2. to two. The lead just keeps growing as the Spurs finally do score. They're now at four, but we're at 23, 19 point lead in the first quarter, and it's not even over. And Tony Parker gets the and one foul on Paul Millsap. Now, passing it in to Patty Mills. Mills with a nice pass right there, and then Danny Green for the long three, and he gets that one to go too. Danny Green, a guy, it's a little painful to watch him play basketball sometimes. Just He can't really do anything else other than shoot. He showed some nice driving in the playoffs and in the finals against the Heat, but other than that, he's just not a really good basketball player. He just shoots a lot. Is Corver is another player sort of like that. He's basically on the team to shoot threes. So when he's on the floor, you can basically expect us to get him the ball to shoot. So now Shelvin Mack on a mid-range jumper gets that to go. 13-point lead, still a nice lead in this game. As Shabazz Napier is in the game, he shoots, and the score going into the second quarter is 30 to 17 like I've said multiple times this is a great start a really nice first quarter great performances out of really all of our players especially Gordon Hayward and Jeff Teague putting up some nice points so now the start of the second quarter Lou Williams has the ball trying to get into the paint looking for a screen he gets it and then sees Perowantich cutting and he just gets a perfect pass right there and Antich will just lay that up and in as I will force a timeout from the Spurs. So Tony Parker, top of the key right now, going with a spin move, trying to get past Jeff T. Kicks it to Tim Duncan, and he hits that patent elbow jumper. Really nice shot right there. So now Jeff Teague with the ball, taking it towards the top of the key. Looking for Hayward. Hayward for three, and he gets that one to go too as he knocks that shot down at eight points in the second quarter. A really nice offseason acquisition it appears. So Jeff Teague driving and he gets that right past Tim Duncan as Duncan almost was able to block that. You can see we've only missed 10 shots. We've made more shots than we've missed. Or something that you always want to see. When I play I always want to shoot over 50% and then have my opponent shoot under 50. As that, that's sort of, if you can do that most of the time you will win. As we're still just piling it on Gordon Hayward with a long two. He's four for six, 66% on the day. So Schroeder with the ball against Danny Green. Kicks it to Chris Anderson who's trailing. He lays that up and in. Great shot. 17 point lead towards the end of the second quarter. About two minutes left in the second quarter. Schroeder with the ball top, er, right at the top of the paint. And he knocks down the mid-range jumper. Schroeder, he's probably going to 
more towards the end of the season and as he progresses a little more in the season as that was a great shot by Danny Green hitting a little fadeaway three but he'll be our backup point guard most likely right now he's, he's probably the third on the what the depth chart would be with Shelvin Mack and Lou Williams probably ahead of him as they sort of split time Lou Williams not really a true point guard is going into halftime with a 14 point lead but Lou Williams not really a true point guard kind of a combo guard who has some nice scoring off the bench and then Shelvin Mack he he's uh, I I'm not a huge fan of him on this coach you're going to have to climb a bit of a hill here in the second half what are you telling your guys they need to do to turn this thing around I think we just moved the ball a little bit we were just on the dribble a little bit too much and they've got a lot of pressure out there so the ball's got to move coach thanks for the time gentlemen back to you at the table okay Doris thanks and we'll have the start pushing like I was saying I'm not a huge fan of Shelvin Mack in this game he's a little slower and I like my point guards like a Jeff Teague or a Dennis Schroeder who has some nice speed. And a little step back jumper right there from Lou Williams. He's a nice spark plug off the bench for a team. And we may actually look to trade him later in the year to see what we can get. So Kawhi Leonard, he just goes for the layup. Not trying to show off right there as he beats his man off the dribble. I was looking for a dunk, but nope. So now Lou Williams on the fast break. Kicks it to Gordon Hayward and he lays that up and in. Great execution on the fast break from Lou Williams and Gordon Hayward. Hayward shooting a really nice percentage on the day. Tony Parker with the long two, and he gets that shot to go in as he got a really nice screen. So Jeff Teague has the ball into the post for Paul Millsap, and he lays that up and in through contact from Tiago Splitter. Paul Millsap, he's going to be a free agent after this year, so it will be very interesting to see what we will do with him in the offseason. So Lou Williams on the three. Nice screen right there from Horford and that. They doubled him, and then that left Lou Williams open. So now Perowantich cutting off the pick and fade, and he lays that shot up and in. And really nice play right there. So Tony Parker in the paint. He puts that shot up through contact from Gordon Hayward. A really nice shot from the Frenchman. Hayward with the ball. Throws it to uh, Jeff Teague, and then Teague will hit the long two. In this game, I feel like the... Or mid-range jumpers in real life aren't a good shot is you have to shoot 60% from inside for it to be worth a three if you're shooting 40% that's like the analytic thing but in this game a lot of players are better at shooting mid-range jumpers and that that's just something that really affects the game as it's much easier to hit a like get a screen and then pull up in the key to uh, so now to uh, get points rather than having to shoot threes if you really want to do that or get layups so James with the ball now driving and he lays that over I think that was Shelvin Mack really nice play from the Spurs free agent acquisition so now Corey Joseph with the ball kicks it to Baz and he knocks down a long three from Shabazz Napier the national champion so now Shabazz Napier into the third quarter and he gets that shot to go as that's a 9-0 run for the Spurs we're gonna have to try and hold off on this run to keep this lead going into the fourth quarter up by 10 the Spurs have definitely cut into this lead and we're gonna have to the Spurs will definitely make a run towards the end of the game as that is just what they they do as a team they never really give up and that's something the Spurs, one of the reasons the Spurs are so good is they just fight and they're they're just a talented team so Lou Williams with the ball setting up a play gets a screen from Gordon Hayward Passes it to Shelvin Mack. Shelvin Mack for three. And that's another three from the Hawks. I built this team to have a lot of three-point shooters. Only people who really can't shoot threes are Al Horford and Chris Anderson at this moment. So that was a really long three right there. Once again, this is just turning into a three-point shooting contest. Tony Parker trying to get in the lane. And he does, and he lays that shot up and in over two Hawks players. As that's another run from the Spurs. A 9-1 run. And the lead is only five now. Like I said, I knew they would make a run, and we just have to stay strong through it. So now Jeff Teague into the post for Paul Millsap. Tim Duncan on defense. And Millsap gets that shot to go right over Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan's aged a little bit in this game, so he's not quite as good as he is in real life. So now Tim Duncan, he still has the passing, though, as he hits a cutting Kawhi Leonard. Great pass right there from the big man. So Millsap in the post once more. Tim Duncan guarding and Millsap just goes towards the lane and lays that shot up as the lead is now a five is now five is that's a 13 to five run from the 
uh, Spurs. So Paul Millsap, another bucket for him on the pick and roll. Nice pass right there from Jeff Teague, and Millsap just finishes that off. So end the shot clock. Teague for three, and that is good, and that makes the lead 10. Great shot right there from the point guard of the Hawks. So Teague on the fast break, kicks it to Hayward. Hayward dunks that in as that lead is back up to 11. Really nice execution on the fast break and the 31 inch vertical from the Butler product. As him and Shelvin Mack, teammates in college, and this is sort of a uh, coming back together for them. Something I forgot to mention and I just thought about the other day. So now in the lane right there from Kawhi, Jeff Teague has the ball. Setting the offense back up into the corner for Hayward. And that goes as that gets the lead back up to 11 once more. Gordon Hayward, 16 points, 4 rebounds. A really nice day from him. Tony Parker getting in the lane what he's good at. And he gets a perfect pass right there to Tim Duncan. Really nice play. So now Paul Millsap looking to set the screen. And that is a great cut from Jeff Teague as he lays that right over Tim Duncan. Not sure how that shot was not blocked. And this is pretty much game at this point. 13 point lead with about 30 seconds left as Tony Parker hits the floater. An extremely good performance from the Hawks in this game. Something that you would not expect. A, really a blowout win. The Spurs cut it close a couple of times. But it was never really... The lead was never really that much in danger. They cut it to 5 and I think 3 multiple times. But they never led once in this entire game. And I think Doris Burke has an interview with maybe Tim Duncan. Well, I'm here with Paul Millsap, and Paul, you really delivered tonight to help the team. What goes into a game like tonight where you put up such a tremendous stat line? Man, forget the line, man. I'm just glad we came out here and we played our hearts out. Uh, it's a good team we played tonight, but we stuck with it and we fought it out and won the game. Great job by you, Paul. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Doris, for that. So that was actually Paul Millsap with Doris Burke. But same time, it's still an interview. So a really nice performance, like I said. Not a lot of bench help, but when your starters play like that, you don't need a ton. So Tony Parker goes 8 for 14. Mono Ginobili goes 8 for 6 from the field. But he did make 7 free throws to sort of give his team a nice points. So we beat him in a lot of the areas except for points in the paint. That's somewhere where we always struggle. And I hope you enjoyed because I'm out.